What do unicorns, humans, and numbers all have in common? Is it that they are all awesome? Well, yes. But apart from that, they can all be referred to as sets. The set of all unicorns, the set of all humans, and the set of all numbers. Okay, but what is a set? Great question. You know how all squares are rectangles, but not all rectangles are squares? Similarly, a set can be defined as a collection of elements, but as we will soon see, not all collection of elements can form a set. Two sets are equal if they have the same elements. For example, if this ball represents a set and its elements are 1, 2, 3, you could call these the set 1, 2, 3. But you could also call these the set 2, 2, 1, 1, 3. Because saying it twice doesn't add any new elements. At the end, you're describing the same set. The one with numbers 1, 2, 3 and nothing else. I get it now. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Anyway, now that you know what sets are, I would like to introduce you to two types of sets. First, sets that do not contain themselves. Second, sets that contain themselves. Those two types of sets are pretty self-explanatory. The type of sets that do not contain themselves simply do not contain themselves. A good analogy would be English words that do not describe themselves. For example, the word monosyllabic, which means having one syllable, does not describe itself, since it has five syllables. Similarly, a good analogy for a type of sets that contain themselves would be English words that describe themselves, like the word polysyllabic, which is actually composed of more than one syllable. Now consider the following set. Are you ready for this? Here we go. It's the set of all sets that do not contain themselves. Think about it. If the set of all sets that do not contain themselves does not contain itself, then it means that it should be in the set. But then, if it's in the set, then it does contain itself. So it shouldn't be. This is my friend, is known as Russell's Paradox. Russell's Paradox showed that not all collection of elements are sets, and it led to the formulation of the axioms for all of modern mathematics. So next time you come across unicorns, humans, or numbers, I hope you'll recall Russell's Paradox, and just for a moment, appreciate its beauty and benefit to the field of mathematics.